yeah, there's, there's plenty of wandering around in the desert. Yeah. But I'll tell you something else that's cool. You know, when I first did this back in 2018, did a meet and greet after, and I'd say a third of the people were in pretty bad emotional distress. You know, often when they came to meet me after the lectures, they were in tears or, you know, they had some pretty brutal story to relate. And it's pretty emotionally grueling to see that night after night. And now there's way more women who come. There's way more couples. And the guys are way more put together. So that's pretty cool. You know, and lots of them, especially the ones that get the meet and greet tickets, they've been listening for five or six years. And they've really been trying to put their lives together. You know, and so most of the stories I hear now are stories like I was in a pretty rough place, but I started to put my life together. And, you know, now I have this girlfriend and we're getting married or we're just having mm. our first child. And now I have a business and mm. here's what I'm doing that's really working. And they're all standing up and you know, half of them are in suits or three piece suits. And that's something, man. I mean, that's partly why we keep doing it. Tammy and I, you know, it's like it's so positive think well why wouldn't you keep doing that that's but, an overwhelming responsibility too right like the 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 feeling behind that that you've had this enormously positive impact on these people's lives and then that's not something you set out to do as a person like this is almost something that was thrust upon you as an adult I mean you became very famous as a professor who was you know fairly anonymous you just yeah. teaching and then all of a sudden you've been thrust into the public conversation worldwide. Yeah, yeah. Well, it, it's some of it's, it's, what would you say? It's utterly unpredictable and it's utterly surreal and entirely predictable, both at the same time. Because, like, I knew that what I was dealing with when I was working at Harvard, when I was writing Maps of Meaning, I knew that there was something about that that was core. I knew it. And I could tell partly because of the effect it was having on my students when I was teaching because I was watching that. And the typical comment for my course evaluation was this course changed the way I looked at everything. And so, mm. and that's a pretty radical claim. And, you know, I had 20 years of that, practicing doing that. It's the, there's a thing that men need. Um, they need difficult tasks, and they need to know that they can overcome difficult yeah. tasks. Yeah, and, yeah. and through that, you develop your, your human potential. You yeah. develop what you're capable of doing. And if you don't encounter those things in life, you, you remain feeble yeah. and you may fetal even. Yeah. And yeah. very, uh, not just immature, but, um, insecure. Well, and not just insecure, but insecure, then bitter, yes. then resentful, yes. then dangerous. Yes. Right. Right. Yeah. 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 The alternative, like weak, insecure, bitter men are not harmless. No. No. Quite the contrary. And they try to damage people. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And they try to oh, damage yeah. people oftentimes because in comparison to those people they're trying to damage, they feel they, f they come up short. They don't like it. They don't like the feeling. Yeah. And they, they try to destroy the thing yeah. that makes well, them feel bad. That's Cain and Abel. Yeah. You know, that's, and it's so interesting because in the biblical story, that's the first story about human beings, right? Because Adam and Eve are made by God. They don't count. The first two human beings are fratricidal brothers mm. engaged in a war of envy that degenerates into the flood and the Tower of Babel. It's stunning. It's stunning. It's so relatable. I mean, if you are a person that, you know, strives to work hard and accomplish things and you have grand ambitions, you will find so many people that try to destroy that. You know, because there are people who are motivated, at least in part, and sometimes almost completely by envy. But most people aren't like that. And even the people who are like that, mostly aren't like that 100%. Right. That's the thing, right? Is that people are different depending upon the circumstances. And I think most of the people that you would even interact with negatively online, if you choose to interact with them at all, but most of the people that will post things negatively about you online, if you could be alone with them and have a conversation yeah. with them, just a one-on-one -on -one conversation where you could find common ground. Oh, most, yeah. Like most, most student activists... If you went to their parents' house for dinner with them, you'd think, well, that kid's like 85% like every other kid. Yeah. That's a good way of thinking about it, too, you know, because if you don't understand this, you get conspiratorial. It's yeah. Like, so 
imagine there's a system of ideas. We were talking about the system of ideas that might motivate some of the WEF, you know, top-down shenanigans. And we talked about the religious substrate and yeah. the idea that the planet has too many people on it. It's not, it's not like there's anybody there who's fully possessed by those ideas. It's the ideas have a relationship that's part and parcel of the set of ideas. And each person is a partial carrier of those ideas. But if you get 200 people in a room who are partial carriers of that set of ideas, you've got the whole set of ideas there. And that's an animating spirit. Then it acts like a conspiracy. Hmm. And that isn't to say that there aren't sometimes also actual conspiracies. But it's very interest useful to separate out the conspiratorial nature of a set of dynamic ideas from the people who are partial carriers of the ideas. So Jung, Carl Jung said at one point, uh, people don't have ideas, ideas have people. And there's a religious idea that's reflective of that, that the cosmos is a battle between principalities. So that'd be like a battle between spirits. And there, there's a real truth in that because the culture war we're in right now is a battle of systems of ideas. This is why what's happening on the conservative front, say, in Florida has some danger. It's like, well, we want to ban CRT. It's like, well, that's a war that has to be raged in the realm of the abstract. It has to be raged, it has to be raged in, you know, metaphorically in heaven. It's not, as soon as you concretize it, you fall prey to the same pathology. You'll end up enabling censors it has to be debated yeah it, it has, has to, to be, be discussed it has to be thrashed out in the realm of ideas absolutely yeah you ha you can't defeat bad ideas i don't think you can defeat bad ideas with law you have to defeat bad ideas i think you have to defeat bad ideas with a better vision actually i don't even think you can defeat bad ideas in some sense right because there's always the danger that while fighting them you turn into a monster you know What's that Nietzschean statement? If you gaze to, don't, don't forget that when you gaze into an abyss, that the abyss also gazes into you and that someone who spends all their time fighting monsters can easily turn into a monster themselves. Well, isn't so, it also that there's different people at different stages of their lives that will adopt these ideas because they seem the most attractive at the time? Yeah. And it doesn't necessarily mean that that person will hang on to that their whole life. And oftentimes no. people shed terrible ideas that they've adopted early in their life because they've Definitely. recognized the flaws. And yeah, the only yeah. way to recognize well, everyone's the everyone's like that yes. who doesn't get ossified, you know? Right. And the so, only way to recognize those flaws is to have those flaws exposed to you. Yeah. You have to you have to have conversations. You, you, have, you to have, have to have and they have, have to, to think. be yeah, they have to be honest conversations. And you, you have know? to have the ability to analyze them. Yeah, well, what happens, you know, when you have an honest conversation that's engrossing is that you're actually optimizing abstract death so you know maybe your head's full of stupid ideas why are they stupid we go act them out and you die so that's why they're stupid or you suffer 